Hello friends, this video on ecosystem part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. And the third aspect of the ecosystem is energy flow. So what are we going to talk about in energy flow? We will see that how energy flows from one organism to another. We already discussed that one organism depends on another organism for its food. So we will see how energy will flow from one organism to another. So let us talk about energy flow. Now when we talk about energy, which is the ultimate source of energy for all the life forms on earth? Sun. So sun is the source of energy for all ecosystems existing on earth. So let us see how that energy comes from the sun and it gets passed on from one organism to another. So primarily the solar energy is being captured by the producers because producers are the one who prepare the food. So they are the producers, they are the production systems. So they will produce food with the help of sunlight. So they are the primary trappers of sunlight or solar energy. Now what happens after that? Now let us suppose the plants utilize the solar energy at the first step. Then these plants will be eaten up by some other animals, maybe some herbivores who directly feed on plants. So they will also get their energy from the plants. These herbivores in turn will be eaten up by some carnivores who will receive their energy from the herbivores. And finally, when these animals will die, they will be acted upon by the decomposer. So decomposers will again receive some part of energy from all of these. So what is happening? The energy is getting transferred or it is getting passed on from one level of organism to the other. Now, one important fact to be noted here is the radiation or this energy which comes from the sun. You will be surprised to know that only 50% of the solar radiation is photosynthetically active radiation. That means only 50% of the solar energy can be utilized by the plants during photosynthesis. Now, do you think that the plants utilize that 50% of uh, solar radiation? No. Plants utilize only 2 to 10 percent of photosynthetically active radiation. So just imagine a very small percentage of the solar radiation is actually used up by the plants. So it is something like this. Let us suppose that you are eligible to take, uh, for example, let me give this example. Okay, let us suppose that you are eligible to take, uh, say, 10 leaves in a year. So in one year, you are allowed to take 10 leaves. But does that mean that you utilize all the 10 leaves? Maybe you are somebody who takes just one leaf in a year, right? So a similar thing happens here. 50% of the solar radiation is photosynthetically active. That means they can be utilized. But what the plants actually utilize is only 2 to 10% of the photosynthetically active radiation. So photosynthetically active radiation is often written as PAR. What is PAR? It is photosynthetically active radiation. So it is that part of solar radiation which can be utilized by the plants during photosynthesis. And 50% of the solar radiation is PAR. So that means only 50% of solar radiation is photosynthetically active. Now out of this PAR, only 2 to 10 percent of PAR is actually utilized by the plants. So just imagine if in the first step itself, plants utilize only a small percentage of the solar radiation. Now, when some part of this gets transferred to the herbivores, again, some part of this gets transferred to the carnivore what is happening as we are going higher the level so as the level increases smaller portion of energy gets transferred to the next level so plants itself they occupy a small portion of energy so only a very small portion of solar energy sustains the entire living world because the entire living world is dependent on plants 
So energy flow, how do we define that? It is the flow of energy from sun to plants to various organisms of the ecosystem. So this is how energy flow takes place and this is what we mean by energy flow. And we will see that gradu gradually as we go higher the level, the amount of energy will gradually reduce. So we will talk about that a little later. So from this you understood what is meant by energy flow. Now here everything is dependent on sun. Now it is not always necessary that there are certain exceptions in the ecosystem where sun is not the ultimate source of energy. For example, if you consider a, a, a deep sea ecosystem, so deep under the sea the solar energy is not available. So if there sun is not the ultimate source of energy, then what is the source of energy there? Now another interesting fact is that these ecosystems they also agree with the laws of thermodynamics. I am sure you would have studied about the laws of thermodynamics both in physics as well as chemistry. So now you will see that they are being followed in biology as well. So your ecosystems follow the laws of thermodynamics. So let us quickly look at the first law of thermodynamics. So what did it state? It states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another. We cannot create or we cannot destroy energy. We can just transfer, transfer it from one form to another. Maybe chemical energy may con get converted to heat energy. Heat energy may get converted to light energy. Light energy to mechanical energy. So it can get converted from one form to another, but it can never be destroyed or it can never be created. So let us look at the example of ecosystem. So that's what happens here. So the plants receive solar energy, that is the energy from the sun. Then from plants, the energy gets transferred to the herbivores, from herbivores to carnivores and from them to the decomposer. So that is how energy gets transferred from one form to another form. So basically what's happening here, we are not creating any energy. So no creation of energy is taking place. So the entire energy creation is up to the sun. So the sun is providing us whatever energy we are just transferring it from one form of life to another. So that is how it conforms to the first law of thermodynamics. So this is how an ecosystem works and this holds true for any ecosystem. Now let us talk about the second law of thermodynamics. So the second law states that the state of entropy of the universe will always increase with time. So now I, I hope you would have studied about the second law of thermodynamics but still just to give a better understanding let us first talk about what is entropy. What do we mean by entropy? So entropy is nothing but a measure of disorder. Disorderness. So disorderness or randomness, whatever you call it. So the degree of disorderness will keep increasing with time by default. So how do we indicate the disorderness? How do we measure disorderness? So it is indicated by the heat energy that is unavailable for any useful work because some amount of heat energy also get lost. Right? It is not that all the energy which is present in one particular organism will get transferred to the other organism. Now some amount of energy will be used up by that organism for itself and some amount of energy will also get lost. So the disorderness is actually indicated by the energy which gets lost. So in simple words you can say that some part of the energy will always be dissipated as heat. So that energy will not be utilized for any useful work by any of the organisms. Now the scientists have calculated the percentage of usable energy which is being transferred from one organism to another organism in an ecosystem. So what it means is that if you take example of this ecosystem, so let us suppose from the solar energy which is being taken up by the plants. I have already mentioned that only 2 to 10 percent of the photosynthetically active radiation is being utilized by the plants. Now when these plants are eaten up by animals they get some energy but do you think that all the energy that was stored in the plants will get transferred to this animal? No. That's because a part of the energy will get utilized by the plant itself for its respiration and other processes taking place inside and during the trans during 
the process of transfer takes place that is when this animal feeds on the plant some part of energy will also get dissipated or it will get lost as heat so this animal will receive only a small percentage of energy from the plant similarly when this animal will be eaten up by the tiger so tiger will receive only a small percentage of energy which was present in this goat because at every step there will be some amount of energy which will be lost so some part of energy will be lost at each step and then the remaining will be transferred to the next organism at the next level. Now, how much percentage of energy will get transferred from one organism to another in an ecosystem? That percentage of usable energy was calculated by the scientists. And what was that percentage? We will talk about that. So let us take an example with data that will make your understanding even better. Let us suppose that plants capture 1000 calories of energy from the sun. Now, as I said, it can only utilize 2 to 10 percent of PAR. So let us give it a value. Let us say it absorbs some 1000 calories from the sun. Now, it has been calculated by the scientists that the amount of energy that is received by this goat which feeds on the plant directly is only 100 calories. So this goat is able to absorb only 100 calories. So herbivores get only 100 calories. And when these herbivores are eaten up by the carnivores, only 10 calories of energy is available to the carnivores. So this is how the process takes I mean, goes on. So that means as you go from one level to another, only 10% of the energy is being transferred to the next level. Again, when you go from this level to the next level, only 10% of the energy is being transferred to the next level. So the scientists have calculated that only 10% of usable energy gets transferred from one organism to another organism in an ecosystem. So this proves that a large amount of energy is lost as heat. So this is how it also conforms to the second law of thermodynamics which says that with time the loss of energy will increase, the disorderness of the universe will increase. So this is how uh, it, it, uh, the concept of ecosystem agrees with the first law of thermodynamics as well as second law of thermodynamics. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.